Welcome to the first episode of Lazy Susan Fusion, a show where we combine classic cuisines with iconic dishes to create a new fusion recipe. So without further ado, let's spin the Lazy Susans. This week's recipe will be Indian pot pie. Okay, the Indian pot pie. I'm gonna start with a pot pie because I kind of know that a little bit better. We are gonna have crust on top and bottom. The more crust, the better. I like potatoes, I like peas, I'm thinking carrots, simple veggies, and some thick sauce. This is the classic chicken pot pie that I'm imagining. Could be lamb, could be beef, probably not beef, India. They don't like eating cows. Now, admittedly, I only have experience eating Indian food. I have never cooked it. I actually have a friend who's Indian American, he's a very good chef, and I'm sure that he has a much better idea than I do on what Indian foods would be great in a pot pie. Let's see what Krishnan thinks. Krishnan, welcome. Krishnan. Thank you. So we're trying to make an Indian pot pie and I came up a little shy on my knowledge of Indian food. Is what we experience as Indian food in America for the ignorant of us, is it a specific region that has just dominated the immigrant population in America? Or is it a combination of dishes from all over India that we combine as Indian food? So I would say, like when growing up, my experience was primarily Punjabi food. Mm -hmm. And Punjab is from the north, it's like a state somewhere here. Okay. Many people usually only have like one depiction of what Indian food is, but it's actually way more varied. Like think of it as if Italian, French, and German were all considered just like one cuisine. European. <laughs> exactly, like European food. In India, it's like 10 times more diverse. Northern India is the one that usually have the very naan or bread-based dishes. In South India, it's more rice-based dishes. Let me know what you think of when you think of an Indian pot pie. I would be very interested in seeing this like pot pie-sized samosa. Pasta. And what is the inside of samosa. The basic ingredients is gonna be potatoes, peas, and usually like carrots. I don't know if you're reading this or not. In my chicken, <laughs> no, I did not in my pot pie, <laughs> list of vegetables, I wrote potatoes, peas, and carrots as standard stock pot pie <laughs> ingredients. They're not far off, so no, they're not. The spices, though, are very Indian. Oh, yeah, so they're totally it different. It'd be totally different, but I didn't even realize those were like the same basic ingredients. I think let's make two pies. I'll eventually choose between those two for the highlighted recipe, whichever one turns out better. <laughs> so great. I like the idea of a samosa. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really crazy. The coincidence of potatoes, <laughs> yeah, peas, and carrots. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I would love to make something that's more saucy. Maybe that's something that you would normally eat with a naan. We could do a paneer tikka masala. We could do a paneer with cauliflower and potato. Yeah, I think that's a good option. One of those are gonna work. One of them has to work. One of them has to work, if not both. <laughs> if not both. If not both, one of them for sure. Yeah, I'm excited. This is actually gonna turn out. Well, I, think. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Now, I know you didn't come here to learn how to make the trial Indian pot pies. You came here to learn how to make the Indian pot pie. And like you, I have the need for speed. So I'm just gonna summarize. The samosa pot pie was a little bit crumbly. And the paneer tikka masala, absolutely delicious. I do love that it's spicy. But I knew I could make some improvements, starting with the turmeric butter crust. Pour two and a half cups of flour into a food processor. Now, it's a good thing I messed up my first pour ever on the show because perfection's out of the way and we have nothing to worry about. There isn't a recipe for a turmeric butter crust, so in order to spice things up a bit, I added a tablespoon of turmeric, a cup of cold cubed butter, and a teaspoon of salt. I blended all of that together and then added some cold water tablespoon by tablespoon. Now it's important to add the water tablespoon by tablespoon because you want to hit that perfect level where the dough sticks to itself, but it doesn't stick to your fingers. 
At this point, you want to quickly form your dough into two balls for a top and a bottom, wrap them in clean film, and put them in the fridge until you're ready to build your pot pie. The other thing you need to prep when making a pot pie is your tikka marinade because chicken tikka is actually a marinated chicken dish. For the marinade, you want to add one half cup yogurt, a teaspoon of both crushed ginger and crushed garlic, a half teaspoon of chili powder, and a half teaspoon of garam masala. Now, if you don't have garam masala lying around because you don't cook a lot of Indian food, don't worry about it because you can make your own. Cumin, coriander, cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, and black pepper. Add to that an eighth teaspoon turmeric, a teaspoon of oil, a quarter teaspoon salt, and a quarter lemon, but just the juice. Don't add a lemon, just lemon juice. Stir in your cubed chicken breast and let that marinate in the fridge while you prep your masala sauce. The masala sauce starts with toasting some cashews and a couple glugs of oil. I added about 31 cashews. Add one onion, one red pepper, and 14 ounces of crushed tomatoes. Spice that with one teaspoon turmeric, one teaspoon of garam masala, and a half teaspoon chili powder. Now, you're the one eating what you cook. So if you don't like it spicy, don't add a lot of spice. If you like it super spicy, then add more spice. I added a whole teaspoon because I like my food super spicy, but I'm gonna start the recipe at half a teaspoon, and then you can taste and see if you want any more. Blend all of this together and you have prepped your masala sauce. Now to give this tikka masala more of a pot pie, homely feeling, I wanted to add potatoes and cauliflower. So I just boiled the potatoes, start them in cold water, otherwise it's gonna cook immediately from the outside in and you're gonna have a mushy outside before the potato cooks all the way through. I also pre-browned my cauliflower because once you mix it in with the chicken tikka and the masala sauce, it can't really brown anymore. So I took care of that before adding it to the pot pie filling. After those are cooked together, you're gonna add your masala sauce. But first, a fun freaking fact. Chicken tikka masala is already a fusion dish. Chicken tikka is a marinated chicken dish and masala sauce is a pepper onion sauce that weren't really ever served together until British colonists came to India, palates shifted, restaurants started combining things they hadn't combined before, and when they added heavy cream, chicken tikka masala was born. Now to make this sauce really pop, I toasted a teaspoon of cumin seeds with two whole cardamom pods. I kept my cardamom pods whole because it's actually good luck in India if you end up with a cardamom pod on your plate, or in this case, in your pot pie slice. Then add three tablespoons of heavy cream, stir in the potatoes, and your filling is done. This is a good opportunity to taste everything before it goes into the pot pie and you can't adjust the flavor anymore. So if you don't like it, add some salt or spice until you do like it and then build your pot pie, easy. Pastry crust, filling, pastry crust, crimp, egg wash, ventilation holes, and in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes at 425 degrees. Now cooking this is pretty much a no brainer because the inside of the pot pie is already fully cooked. You just wanna look at the outside and when the crust is done, the pie is done. So wait until it's golden brown and enjoy your Indian pot pie. This smells amazing and looks even better than I imagined. I cannot wait to taste Eddie's, it. I'll take it from here. But I cooked it, so I was, yeah, I was gonna. I'm hungry, so you should. Uh... Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you. Ugh. Looks like I'm the judge now. There's no judge. <laughs> I'm eating. Let's dive in here. Ooh wee. That is spicy and delicious. The crust is perfectly flaky. As a judge- You're not a judge. As a judge, I would have to say that this was an excellent dish. The butter from the crust did a great job complementing the filling. I love the Indian flag that you made with the three dipping sauces. Overall, I would say that this was the best dish so far on the series. Not much competition, but uh, what are you cooking next week? We don't know. You'll have to subscribe to find out. Guess you gotta subscribe to find out. As for me, I'm on a highway to the flavor zone. This is Lazy Susan Fusion.